Hey YouTube, it's Thomas here. So today I am going to talk about the ELAC Debut 6.2 versus the LS50, the KEF LS50 and the Dying Audio Focus 160. So for those of you who are here expecting an in-depth review, sorry to disappoint you. Uh, this is going to be a very high level comparison, a very short and simple comparison. And the reason is because when you do comparison video, it is meaningless to all those people that don't have the same taste as I do. For example, if you don't like break speakers, then the LS50, the KEF LS50 um, won't outperform the ELAC because it's just not to your taste. So rather than going into uh, a lot of details, it'll be very high level. It's more of uh, the, my experience, my story, having lived with these three speakers for uh, a few months. So treat this video as an entertainment video as opposed to a serious review video. Well, actually none of my videos are actually serious. If you think about it, it is ridiculous that I'm actually comparing speakers that are multiple price point of each other. The ELAC at 279, the KEF uh, at 1002, and the um, Dying Audio about 3000. I'm talking about US dollars here right now. So a few years ago, this would be not even consider and yet today with the performance of budget speakers so amazing it is worth asking can a speaker uh, be compared to speakers multiple times of its price point now i'm not going to go into detail the strength and the weakness of each speaker since i already made a separate video on each now i'm going to summarize it um, the elect vocals are clean and very forward the kef are really revealing and exciting the dying audio has non-fatiguing high and romantic sounding vocals. Now, all three speakers can benefit from a sub, but not necessary as they all deliver a good amount of bass. So when you talk about bass, I want to add this in, right? Just because the speaker is very punchy, it doesn't mean that it can go very low in frequency. Now, why is that important? Because from my experience, you can hear a piano if your um, bass cannot go very low you cannot feel the weight of the piano so you can tell it's a piano but you don't know is it a grand piano or not so uh, speakers that can go really low they this is the part where they, re they really shine so that's what I meant by all three speakers yes they're good bass they're the punchy but I, I I personally would say that once you add a real subwoofer in uh, it, it can help it's good to have, but not a deal breaker. Another point I want to touch on before we move on is this. Now, in my past video, I mentioned that the KEF, they are very bright and they're uh, very revealing. So you get to hear a lot of details. And given the fact that it has a metal bass tweeter, the way it handles certain instrument is just a lot more exciting. Uh, for example, music like this. There is this zing to it that soft dome tweeter just can't do. Now, even though my Spender S8E is a better speaker overall, the KEF just wins when it comes to making sound like this. Now, the downside is it can be fatiguing if it's not set up correctly. Uh, now, the point I want to touch on is that I notice that people tend to lock on to the negative part. When I say a speaker is bright, people just hear that part and skip the part where I say, if you can adjust it to sound right, they are amazing. So that's the part people don't hear, the amazing part. Now these LS50 can be fine tuned with the help of cables. And by selecting the right front end, there are times when I change uh, between this and my $10,000 speaker, I'm more blown away by the revealing characteristic of these KEF than my more expensive speakers. Now I don't mean the KEF is better than a $10,000 speaker, it is not. But rather, I'm trying to make a point. The KEF, if you can configure it right, is amazing. So my point is just don't focus on the negative aspect I bring up, but give equal weight to the positive part. When it comes to the top end, uh, out of the three speakers, I personally like the LS50 the best. So for today's comparison, I just want to say that the front end easily outclass all the speakers. Uh, I've used uh, the Bell Canto Solid State Preamp and the Bell Canto Monoblock Power Amps. Uh, those are rated at 1000 watt at 4 ohms. Uh, sometimes I will use the Macintosh 352 or 452. 
uh, just to give you an idea, the whole front end setup is sometimes over 20,000. Now the benefit is I get to hear all three speakers in all its glory. Yeah, however, it's not realistic. Uh, so that's why please don't take this video too seriously. It is just for fun. Now I'm going to summarize it really quick. If you're driving it with a front end like this, the dying audio is the best speaker. It will outperform the Kef and the Kef will outperform the ELAC overall. Now I say overall, because the strength of each speaker is good enough to hold its own or even outshine the other speakers depending on your taste. Now, for example, the vocal clarity of the ELAC is still as good as the Kef and maybe even better, once again, depending on your taste. So one day, my audiophile friends came over and I let them listen to the ELAC first. They were really impressed with the vocals. Next, I put up the Kef and the first reaction was, ooh, the ELACs were better. They find that there was more density in the mid-range and preferred it over the Kef. Now, they were surprised. I was surprised. Now, they didn't mention anything about like the top end and the bass because the song uh, uh, that I chose was voice focus. The problem with this comparison is the fact that I had both speakers played on the 4 ohm output of my Macintosh. Now the Elax are rated at 6 ohm and the Kev 8 ohm. So I had it set up for the, the Elax, so that's why 4 ohm. Now I did not bother switching to 8 ohm for the Kev because I was too lazy and I thought eh, the Kev can easily outperform the Elax, so I'll just leave it at 4 ohm output. Now, once they told me, no, uh, the, the ELAC sounded better, okay, I put on the 8 ohm output and redo the comparison. Now, only then they find that the CAF uh, is better or as good as the ELAC. So both speakers are so close in vocal performance that with the wrong amplification, the ELAC can actually catch up to the CAF. That means out there, there are some of you who own ELACs that might outperform the CAF with, with a mediocre front end in terms of vocal. Uh, of course, in the real world, that is rare because, you know, how often you find someone driving these speakers with crazy front end like mine. But the point is the potential exists. Okay, the downside. The ELAC, as good and as good as it is, is less refined. One comment my friend made is that although the ELAC has good punchy bay, bass, its definition or separation is not as good as the two other speakers. The instrument is slightly mushed together. Now, having said that, if you never heard the other two speakers, the ELAC is fine. And finally, the ELAC is not as smooth as the other speakers. I noticed that because the Macintosh is velvet smooth, and I can't hear the smoothness of the Macintosh uh, through this ELAC compared to all the other speakers I've owned. So to sum it up, the vocal clarity on the Elex are as good, but top end smoothness and bass definition is not as good as the two other speakers. Now, this is a big accomplishment for a $279 US speaker. If you don't like bright speakers, these probably will appeal to you more than the Kef. Of course, the dying audio will be the better choice, but at 10 times the price. So let's move on to Kef and dying audio. So I have this iTube 2 buffer. It allows me to boost bass, and for my comparison test, I set it to the maximum to see how far it can push the bass. With the Kev, uh, it didn't feel comfortable. It felt muddy and lack of control. And when I changed to the Dying Audio, you can tell the bass control on the, on the Dying is better. Now, overall, the Dying Audio sounds more high-end, more smooth, better bass, and as I mentioned, more in control. When I put it on the ELAC, I feel like I'm turning it on a subwoofer. Sure, the bass was uh, not in control at all, but it was fun. I can feel the air pressure pushing it uh, against me like from the, the front uh, port. There's a vent there. Um, there's wind coming from it. It's just a lot of fun, but yes, it's, it's a bit uh, mushy. So having said that, right, uh, although the Dying Audio is the better one, uh, choosing speakers really depends on each person's situation. I actually would choose the Kef over the Dying Audio. Now, hear me out. If my wife tells me, Thomas, you can only keep one speaker and I need you to get rid of everything because your man cave is becoming ridiculous, I would choose the Dying Audio. It is overall the better audiophile speaker. However, given that today, my own main speaker uses a soft dome tweeter, there's no point for me to keep it. Another reason I will keep the Kev is because the only thing that bothers me with the Kev is that it is a little too edgy or crisp uh, on the top end. Now I solved it with the iTube 2 tube buffer. 
It's actually a perfect match with the Kev because it rounds off the edges and it, it makes it sound smooth. It elevates the Kev significantly for my taste and that's why it makes more sense for me to keep the Kev. Now, before you run out to buy this iTube 2 tube buffer, and you have to factor in that my front end is powerful enough to deliver the maximum bass to it when I turn on the, uh, the bass boost function on. Now, if you have a 30 watt power amp, I'm not sure the iTube 2 will do anything for you in terms of bass. It will smooth the edges, um, but you know what? Just wait for my iTube tube buffer review. So to summarize, if your front end is good, the ELAC can rival the two other speakers in terms of vocal clarity. The Kev top end is easily the most exciting uh, if you can get it to sound right. Works amazing with the iTube 2. Now, if you don't like bright speakers, the ELAC Unify series, uh, not the slim version, might be more to your taste. Dying Audio is the best overall. The tweeter is not bright yet revealing enough, very easy on the ears, and bass control is the best. This should not come as a surprise at as it is the most expensive speaker by a margin. For the second part of my comparison, uh, I try to make it as real world as possible. Now, I use a more normal front end setup. I use my computer DAC, it's an Asus DAC, uh, regular blue jean interconnects, cheap pink color speaker cables, and I got my hands on this Onyx A55 integrated amp. It's rated at 55 watts at 8 ohm and 100 watts at 4 ohm. Now, this is a good integrated amp. With this amp, I would say the gap between the ELAC and the KEF actually widens. Now, I know many of you find the ELAC amazing with a normal front end setup and a budget setup on top of that. But I'm telling you right now, you have maybe only bring out 60 to 70% of your ELAC's potential. They are that good. So when I put it through a normal front end, although it is still good, the wow factor drops exponentially for the ELAC relative to the two other speakers. Now you have to understand that from my point of view that it's going from a jaw dropping speaker to just an okay speaker, it is a big gap. The Kev with a mediocre front end still maintain its strength. It is after all an easier to drive speaker and the revealing tweeter still shines, but the brightness has increased due to less bass. Um, maybe it's the cheap cable that I'm using, so it's, it's still okay. Regardless, it is still the most entertaining because of its revealing top. I would say the Kev took the least drop in performance out of the three. Dying audio, my issue with them is always power. To shine, they need power. So with a social front end, the, the bass really takes a dip. It does sound okay. No, it actually still sounds good. But for a speaker of this caliber, it's really just a waste. Uh, but having said that, if price is not a factor, I would take this tiny audio still uh, if I can only choose one speaker. Now, what if price was a factor? Then all three speakers are a good choice. Interestingly, out of all three speakers, I probably spend most time with the ELAC. I enjoyed it because I get a kick out of experiencing getting a lot for paying nothing. Well, I say my DNA, wanting to get the world and paying nothing for it. Not that it sounds better than the Kev or Dying, it's just that wow factor of this is so good for the price every time I listen to it. Now, I don't spend that much time with the Kev and Dying audio because their performance is closer to my high-end speakers. Uh, so I might as well listen to the higher-end speakers. Well, I'll take this as a compliment, right? So they're, they're pretty good. Uh, well, once in a while, I do get the same experience of, oh, I get so much with so little money with the Kev, but not really with the Dying Audio. At 3000 bucks, you, you expect it to sound good. So to wrap it up, I'd like to share my philosophy again. When it comes to brand name, everything is priced within its performance bracket at its peak. Let me clarify. There are times when I bring home a $3,000 power amp, and yet I prefer the $1,000 power amp. So in this case, I would argue that $1,000 power amp is better. However, you, if you take the best $3,000 $3, power amp versus the best $1,000 power amp to your taste, the $3,000 power amp will always win. Now, it's important that I, I stress the word to your taste, because if you don't like Macintosh, well, a $3,000 Macintosh uh, amp will do nothing for you. And you know, it's in our human nature wanting our $5,000 speaker to outperform a $10,000 speaker. That is true, this can be true, if the $5,000 speaker is to your taste and the $10,000 speaker is not. 
However, that's it. I would argue that if both speaker is to your taste, a $10,000 speaker will be the better speaker when it comes to brand name, right? If you look at a, a company, uh, if you take their top end tier versus their bottom end tier, well, because you know, they're the same sound signature, usually the top end tier will always win given the same condition, right? I'm, I'm not factoring room size and none of that, but that's usually how it works. The exception might be the DIY companies. When, when I say DIY companies, I mean somebody building their own speakers in, in their basement and selling it on the internet or direct mail companies because they skip the distributor and the dealer costs. Uh, so they can offer a, a lot more uh, for the price. So uh, with that, uh, I'm going to end my video. Uh, if you have any comments, uh, please leave it in the comment section. Now, uh, summary is here, so I'm, I'm really busy, especially I shoot weddings as a hobby. Uh, so forgive me if it, it takes me a long time to answer you, or I simply just give you a th uh, thumbs up, a like, as opposed to uh, taking the time to write back to you. I, I really do appreciate all the comments. Um, it's probably one of the, the, the best thing. Uh, about making this video, I get to to have a chit chat with people. So uh, please do leave comments. Um, to uh, to next time then.